Hi folks, Tim Jenis here. Today we are going to talk about the timpani roll. We will talk about how to start the roll, how to end the roll, how to keep the roll going, and how to get the best sound out of the roll. And then some techniques of actually how to practice the roll. Hope you enjoy. So, timpani roll, what is it? Um, a timpani roll is a sustained note, basically. Um, it's the same as any other instrument when you hold a note for a whole note when it's a sustained tone. Ba, maybe something like that. Um, in percussion, we do this through uh, what's called a roll. And, um, and there's different types of roll in snare drum. There's a multiple bounce roll where you hit several bounces in each hand. Um, with marimba or timpani, um, it's done with a single stroke roll which means um, each hand plays one note followed by the other. So it's alternating strokes, basically. Okay? Uh, basically done like this. So uh, the roll has three parts. Um, the beginning, obviously, or the attack of the roll. Uh, the sustain, the middle part, and the ending, okay? Um, so, uh, in general terms, um, we want your attack to sound the same as if you were playing single notes. So if I played ba, 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 I'd want the beginning of the roll to sound like ba. If I was going ta, 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 I'd want the beginning to sound like ta. So I want it to be the same, basically. The sustain is the middle part of the roll, um, and that's just how uh, you're keeping the drum ringing. Um, and then the end is probably going to be like the beginning, so it's ba ba. So if we played that, so the beginning part is the attack. So. Basically, what we want to do is we want to start the drum ringing very quickly. We don't want it to start so that it's, um, uh, we want it to have a clear definition. So what you basically need to do is start it with um, uh, a couple strokes or a few strokes that are very close together, okay? You wouldn't want to start it like this. You get da 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 da. You want da ba. So make your first three sto strokes close together. The first stroke is a little bit higher than the second stroke. So if this is my first stroke, and this is my second stroke, my positioning is here. And this is going to hit first, so it's like a backwards flam. Right? Um, if this was the second stroke and it was up here, we'd have, it would sound something like this. We get kerplunk. We want a nice clean start. So make your first stroke and your second stroke um, a little bit off from each other and basically start them almost at the same time. This one a little bit sooner. The middle part of the sustain is how fast and what you're doing after you've done your attack. So you've done a few strokes that are quick. Now, you wouldn't want to keep that same speed necessarily. So there's three factors that determine how fast you're going to roll. Um, and those aspects are dynamics, how loud or soft you're playing, uh, the sticks that you're using. If you use a very hard stick versus a very soft stick, that, may, that, that will make a difference in how fast you roll. Um, and then the last one is head tension. So if your head, uh, 
how high or low the timpani is tuned will determine how fast or slow that you roll. The higher the timpani is tuned, if you're at a very high pitch or a high tension, like this drum over here, which is a G on the 23, uh, that's fairly tight, so I have to roll quite fast. Conversely, down here is a low E, looser, so I can roll slow. And that adjustment in speed happens right after those first few strokes, right? So we have the attack, the sustain, and that sounds something like this. The end of the roll is going to be just like the beginning in most cases, when you're tying a note into the next note. If you have a whole note, you have the attack, the whole note sustain, and then that's going into another quarter note perhaps, it might sound like this. So in most cases you will connect your rolls into the next roll. There's um, one little trick that you can do. Sometimes um, when you're rolling and connecting, you sometimes have to speed up your hands to get to where you want to go if I'm playing. Your strokes might not work out so, so well. So um, one little technique that you could possibly do is you could double the last couple strokes in one hand. So if we slow that down, you can see that in this hand there's a little double happening before I play the last stroke. That just gives you enough time to reset that hand and get a nice clear ending stroke because you can't just play from the roll, you have to reset. If I took away one hand and didn't do the double, there's just that little gap before I play the last note, but it's filled in with the other hand, so you don't really hear it. But adding that double at the end fills it in a little bit more effectively. So in order to move the stick in the hand, um, you want to sort of pay attention to a couple different aspects. Um, one, your wrist position, whether you're flat or whether you have a thumbs up. Um, playing the, the wrist in, in general um, moves most efficiently when it's in this position. It has the most power, it has the most efficiency, and it has the most flexibility. Um, so it's like, you know, when you throw a baseball or when you bounce a basketball, you're going to get the most bang for your buck here. So when you're playing general stroke, sometimes this is a nice, you know, way to play with your uh, wrist fairly flat. Um, thumbs up, you don't have as much efficiency. There's not as much flexibility there. Um, but actually for rolling, we don't want a lot of punch when we play each stroke. We want a little bit more... Um, of a gentler stroke. So this, you know, being in this position is actually beneficial for rolling. So typically when I play, uh, my wrist isn't here. Um, it's not here. It's sort of in between. It's sort of right there. This is the most comfortable position uh, for me. And then I get a little bit of both. Um, but when I roll, I typically turn my hand in just a little bit so that my thumb is a little bit more in the up position because I want to actually be in this uh, weaker position which will allow me to use more finger control and not punch into the head so much. So we typically want to use a little more of the smaller muscles like fingers and wrist when we're doing our roll. So a good exercise to do this is if you uh, put the stick between your thumb and the index finger, like this, just these two. 
you should be able to rock the stick back and forth this way. So you're just gently rocking around the thumb. If I hold it this way, you can sort of see either way. And then you can put your third finger around the stick. That will give you a little bit more stability. And then the third finger can participate. And then the fourth finger can actually participate as well uh, with both hands this way. And the pinky finger can do whatever it wants. Doesn't have to be part of the stroke at all, as long as it's relaxed. Okay, so you could just be sitting, watching TV, have a stick in your hand, you know, hold it straight up this way, and just practice this little motion. And you can see that there's really not much wrist happening here. It's, the wrist is fairly still. It's all sort of in the fingers. Um, so, uh, you know, once you have that, uh, once you're sort of comfortable with that, we can do eight strokes each on the timpani like this. Right, so you have a nice relaxed grip pressure. It's not tense at all. And you're trying to get the stick to go straight up and down. You're trying to get the stick to come off exactly straight up and down. If it scoops at all this way, you're actually muffling the drum a little bit as you play. So it's important for you to watch the stick so that it's going straight up and down. So, You'll also want to practice maybe slower and faster strokes, like this. Maybe faster. Okay. Uh, and then once you have that, then the roll, uh, if you can roll faster or slower, then going at a normal speed for whatever head tension you have and sticks that you have in your hand will be probably a little bit easier, so it's somewhere around here. And that's how you want to move the stick. Okay, so now that we can move the stick, um, we want to sort of pay attention now to um, a couple different factors, and one of them is um, the how this the angle of the stick um, in comparison to the head, meaning the head here is um, uh, at a, a flat angle, and you you have the choice of making your stick sort of come in at this angle or more parallel to the head, this angle. So they, they both uh, can be done. Um, it's not so uh, doable when you have a calf head. These are plastic heads, but when you have a calf head, um, it, it uh, doesn't work as well because you need to get off calf heads a little quicker than plastic. Plastic, you can keep the mallets on the head a little bit longer and you can get away with it and it sounds okay. Uh, but. Um, with a calf, you can't do that. So um, we want to sort of pay attention, though, of what the differences in sound are. So if I'm playing, you can hear that it brightens up a teeny bit as I steepen my angle a little bit. Um, it also makes a difference of what kind of sticks you're using. If you have a, um, a cartwheel, these are ball sticks, um, but if you have a cartwheel stick, you can typically do this a little bit more. You sometimes need to do it to get a little bit smoother sound because cartwheel sticks tend to have a little bit firmer type of sound. Um, the other thing you want to pay attention to is, is the distance apart that the sticks are. So, um, you know, you could be rolling here, or it can be rolling here. Um, again, they both can be done, but they both have a slightly different color and a slightly different resonant quality to them. The way the timpani head resonates um, is that typically when you strike the drum, if I strike right here, 
the most, the vibration point is the most um, prominent right where I'm hitting. And where it's second most prominent is its opposite point, so here. So this point is vibrating quite a bit in comparison to this. The third and fourth is sort of more of the 45 degree angle, so these two spots. So here, 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 and here. Where the timpani is not vibrating um, more is next to where you're hitting. So in this area or in this area, there's not much vibration going on. It's more here and here. So if you're rolling in this position, you're really getting you know, four points of prominent vibration in the timpani head. Typically you want the whole head really ringing because you want to try to get this as legato as possible and you don't want to hear you want to hear ba. you just want it to sound like a long tone. So if I roll here and then spread out, you'll hear a little bit of a difference in the resonant quality, so I'll do that. You can maybe hear there's just a little bit more um, thuddiness when I'm rolling close together uh, versus um, more here. So it's about a lug apart, I would say, um, uh, in distance. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to go out here because then you're basically doing the same thing as when you roll here. You're sort of canceling yourself out. This gets the most um, reverberation, so uh, that's probably what you want to try to do. Now you can you can play with the color by you know doing things like you know moving in or even moving towards the center or the edge. That can change the quality as well. So if I play on the edge, versus in the normal spot. versus more towards the center. You can kind of hear it goes from bright to dark a little bit, so you can kind of mess with that a little bit. So if I do it gradually. So be aware of where you are um, as far as towards the edge or towards the, the middle. And then you, you can kind of put all that together if you're doing special effects or if you want a sort of a, you know, maybe a little bit of a hairpin with a bump on it. You can kind of start here, move in a little bit, go a little towards the center and then come back out. Uh, that can be a nice effect. Or vice versa, you could go sort of a little bit more out. So depending on the musical situation, you want to be aware of really, you know, what your positioning is. And you can put this kind of thing on top of it. that can add a little bit to it as well. So um, the quality of you know, the strokes don't really change, it's just sort of your positioning within the head. So the types of sticks that you are using uh, will uh, definitely affect the type of roll sound that you're going to get. So in general, when you're, when you're dealing with harder sticks, um, you're gonna have to roll a little bit faster. Um, and uh, you're going to cover up the uh, amount of uh, sound that you're getting per beat uh, and vice versa. So if I played with some pretty hard sticks, you can hear. If I go to a little softer. to an even 
softer stick. So um, let your stick choice try to reflect the color that you want, but know that you'll have to alter your um, uh, technique a little bit uh, in order to get the roll to sound as legato as possible, and that's the ultimate goal. So depending upon the type of beginning to the role that you want um, can be um, altered as far as what muscles and the speed that you use. So uh, we talked about the beginnings of the role it needs to be a little bit faster strokes in the beginning um, and that doesn't change but how you move into the head with what muscles you're using does make a difference. So obviously um, the bigger muscles are heavier and also slower. So you can maybe get a sort of a thicker type um, beginning to a roll depending upon how you alter the speed. If you do a quick one, you'll obviously get a lot more um, marcado type of beginning. And if you play it a little bit slower, you're going to get a little bit more lush type of sound. And then you can brighten it by, you know, if you use uh, smaller muscles, wrist or fingers, at the beginning of the attack. So if I just did sort of a, um, let's say, mezza mezza type arm stroke, that's a fairly nice sound. If I use the same stroke with the wrist, not too much difference. So if I speed it up, One is slightly brighter than the other, right? If I use fingers versus arm, you can play around with that color a little bit. If I go with a, a very big sort of slow stroke, I like to do that type of stroke when I'm trying to get immediate sound of the roll without any attack. So it's very slow and with both hands. That way the roll starts right away and it kind of, oh, I think of it more like a, a chorale that's going, ha, ah, that type of sound. Uh, we could also just create a lot of speed it's a little bit more it's quite a bit more heavier as far as the attack goes um, I typically don't like to do just one strike versus the one strike is too thin um, it, uh, it's a lot thinner out in the audience than, than you think, because I used to do one hit and then roll, um, but now it's always basically the first few strokes. So don't be afraid to play around with the type of attacks that you're using. You can use fingers, you can use wrist, you can use arm, um, but the general idea of having the first few strokes quicker at the beginning uh, sort of remains constant. I don't alter that all that much. Okay, so when dealing with the loud roll, um, there is a few things that you want to sort of keep in mind. Um, what I try to do is um, not alter the tone when I'm playing louder. Typically, um, what I might hear is things might brighten. It might go from ba right? I want to keep the ah sound all the way through. So as far as speed goes, it needs to be altered um, from soft to loud. So um, if you speed up your roll, um, you're most likely going to brighten the sound a little bit as you get louder. So if I did that,
gets a little blary. If I do the same thing and I slow down, a little more uniform um, if I do it that way. Um, and conversely, when you're getting softer, um, sometimes you need to speed up because you're not getting the head to vibrate as much, so you might need to play a little faster. So don't fall into the trap of, you know, wanting to speed up your rolls as you get louder. Maybe just, I mean, it's just a touch getting slower. It's not that big of a difference, but it is a difference. Um, the other thing that we want to pay attention to is, you know, how we're striking the drum, how much force we're using to strike the drum. So what I typically try to do is I try to um, play a little bit lighter as I get a bit, little bit louder. So it, it seems counterintuitive, but it, it actually makes the sound a little bit more uniform. So a good exercise to do that is to play sort of these long, big strokes with the wrist where the stick is almost going past your ear and you try to hit the drum as lightly as you can. And then speed up gradually and keep that lightness happening. Try to keep it at like a mezzo piano level. So that's a good exercise. My, you can see my hand is kind of turning kind of this way a little bit, sort of like a, turning a doorknob a little bit. I'm not really doing this as much because this is a lot more efficient. It's gonna get more punch in the sound. So if I change, you'll hear the difference. So depending upon the stick, you know, you might have to change the angle a little bit. You might get too bright this way, but just listen to your sound as you're rolling and try to get that nice sort of light stroke um, while you're playing heavy. So if I'm standing, sometimes I go down a little bit to get my stroke sort of even if I need it, or I can stand taller. If you sit, you can you know, do the same, basically, depending upon how you're sitting. Uh, so pay attention to those aspects. And then practice the from loud to soft, soft to loud. Nice and smooth, pretty relaxed. So lastly, um, we want to um, figure out how we're going to move from drum to drum. Uh, now that we know how the attack sustain, um, it's just the movement now. Um, so um, a good exercise is just do half notes into a half note. So roll for a half note, half note, uh, single note uh, from in the two middle drums. change the tempo and the dynamics, um, loud, soft. Um, a couple alterations, that little double bounce at the end can give you a little bit of time to move your hand to this drum. So 
So that can give you a, a little bit of a little leeway there. So um, uh, another thing to do is perhaps um, uh, you can muffle one drum as you hit the other drum. I typically just use one finger when I'm doing this because I don't want to have it too, uh, I don't want to hear the muffle at all. I never want to hear muffling. Um, so, uh, and then you can, you know, utilize both these concepts when you're going from, you know, skipping drums. change the speed a little bit too. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, go to timgenis.com for any other um, new videos and relevant information and great products as well. Thanks. See ya.